to this video is called uh, oh, running Ubuntu within why would you want to now if you have any experience virtual machine pretty resources and of course uh, not all of us have very high spec PCs okay show you the new fetch fetch this thing only has six gigs of not very the virtual machine all they do to a solution to solve your compatibility problem is software such as Loom. Loom here only likes to play with only likes to run on debian fedora ubuntu windows so if you have Ubuntu, you technically should be able to run. However, I like to use Manjaro for reasons. One of the reasons being aesthetics is a bit lightweight, not as lightweight, but uh, it has a lot of convenience features such as the Ubuntu doesn't have as much. I have the OA Arch user repository. Love the love the app. So there are reasons I like to use Manjaro. You may like Linux distribution. Yeah, sure. By all means. Problem is if you want stuff like Salome, it's gonna be a. Of course, a lot of uh, open form does work better with Ubuntu. It installs faster. So how can you run? Well, to run Ubuntu quickly, use Docker. Uh, well, if you take a look at some of the... So I'm trying to condense down some of the things so that you can use it for yourself in a very practical manner without going too much into all the details. Okay, this video is meant for those... Uh, for those people who you have some experience already, I'm not speaking to a completely new audience, you should have some uh, experience with it, show basic stuff. Uh, time. And this should not be your first time uh, calling home or other people. So, this is just something to a bit more convenience if you have somewhat experience. So without further ado, let me start by explaining a little bit of what Docker is. And Docker is, well, the way I like to think of it is it's a lightweight virtual machine of sorts, but it's not exactly a virtual machine. Because, uh, well, you take a look at this new fetch. What does new fetch do? Tell you CPU, GPU. Okay, CPU and memory, uh, these are the components of the computer. Okay, it's basically hardware, which the kernel will access. Now, a virtual machine will use a uh, software sort of mimic the behavior of CPU, RAM, even a uh, hard disk space. So that's why you have virtual hard disk, virtual CPU, and virtual. Of course, all of that is going to take up quite a fair bit of computing power. On top of that, you will need to um you'll need to load on an OS. So you're using software, using uh, software to emulate or mimic the behavior of OS, CPU, GPU. No, not GPU. CPU memory and hard. That's going to be not very that's not viable for all computers like it did not, not uh, don't have a huge uh, development computer you should not run too many virtual machines okay so um docker docker is quite interesting docker instead of uh, emulating your cpu memory and hard disk space all docker does is to 
just change the S. Okay, let's just get started. I'll just dive straight in into how you can use Docker on Manjaro. Okay, so to install Docker on Manjaro, it's very simple. One, you can uh, go to your apps. Docker. And just search Docker. It will have a snap package, official repository as well. But I won't be doing. I'm going to install it using. I'm going to put sudo pacman s docker. Okay. So my password docker. Right, so uh, this is uh, a calling Docker. So, okay, Docker is very easy to install. Okay, next we are going to see how to start the Docker process. Okay, so uh, basically, um, this uh, this tutorial is very useful show you how to uh, get into environment using docker the only thing you need to run here is this command one command that copy and paste you'll be able to uh, go into an ubuntu environment you can install open form you can fetch you can install whatever you want. okay because there are a few uh there are a few um patches to that it's not uh, always there are a few things you need to learn along the way to reach your docker relations but for the most part it is not as complicated as the uh chroot yeah let me get that oh, it's not as heavy as a virtual machine that's that's the most important okay so uh yeah we'll try and copy and paste this you'll see that you'll run into a problem straight away Docker run the Ubuntu in so okay, the syntax is pretty simple. You just type Docker. Docker, what do you want to do? You want to run something, right? Okay, the T and I, these are flags, uh, which I will not go through yet. But you want to run Ubuntu, okay? Very straightforward. You have not installed Ubuntu, but Docker will kind of just take care of everything. The shell you use is the bash shell. So we'll just type this. It says what? Permission denied. Okay. Permission denied, meaning to say just use sudo. Yeah. Okay. Then you run into a problem. Okay, it cannot connect to Docker Daemon. Is the Docker Daemon running? So basically you have not started the Docker processes in order to run this command. So you, before you, you run this command, copy and paste a Docker. So um first thing you can use is system ctl okay there are some uh okay let me uh copy and paste this yeah if you if you go online and search this is the docker and running then uh people will show you you know how how to start docker now this one and as usual number one trick of every programmer is to go and google and you'll probably end up in stack over can use uh, system CTO. should be available on ubuntu ubuntu and manjaro alike Ubuntu has system. Use this on Ubuntu as well. So I don't know why you want that. This particular. But yes, uh, you can use sudo system ctl to start Docker. So you can use sudo system ctl and go Docker. Then you can also, this will allow Docker to start every time you boot up your computer. Then I want to start Docker. 
So sudo system ctl enable docker, sudo system ctl start docker. You can also use a system ctl stop, system ctl restart. Okay, all the system command. Play around with Docker. Make sure it's. Okay, so job field was process exit. Oh, um, not sure what, uh, not sure what that means. But I'm let's see whether we can run our system anyway. Okay. So control pro okay so let's go so they ask us to check sudo system else data okay so something is failed okay start re start request re too quickly so the remedy to this probably you can just restart Docker. Stop Docker. We'll start it again. Okay. So let's check whether Docker is running using the status. Docker is running. Okay. So not that difficult. Let's do some uh sudo system L stop start and everything. So um basically that's how to get Docker running. Now let's go into Okay, so let's go into the Ubuntu shell. I'm going to repeat the same same run. Sudo Docker run T I I think the dash T and I flex Ubuntu bin bash. Uh, using the bash what uh bash shell bash shell from okay because this is in our local uh in our root for uh, root system for our manjaro basically we just use the bash so the first time you run this it will say we are not able to find ubuntu latest locally so it will just pull it from the library online that's why docker is very so if we just tap ls here you will see that you are in your new root system and you uh now you are already actually you are actually in so we can use apt okay we will not use sudo because we are already in root okay app update okay are you using apt package manager okay then we can use apt upgrade Okay, so it very quickly. Okay. So um yeah, that's it. Now we can do new fetch as well. We don't have new fetch yet. So we can app install new fetch dim as well. Why to install very nicely? So we can you can see we are running Ubuntu here straight away using Docker. A matter of seconds, rather maybe fifteen minutes. Okay, not not that difficult once you have Docker running. Of course, you need a proper internet connection. Okay, we'll just wait for this. Okay, now as I mentioned before, there was some. Uh, caveats to this so one of the caveats is that the moment you exit you exit um, this Ubuntu shell okay, all the stuff you install will kind of not be there anymore okay let me show you what I mean and then after that try to do some workarounds around that yeah call it a day Okay, so now uh, 
I'm halfway through this installation and it just tells us, you know, just ask us what uh, geographic zone we are in and uh, know where where are we so they can take the time. I'll just I'll just uh sort of uh, uh randomly so called pick around. Oh time zone, time zone. I'll just type something random, thirty seven. It's Chicago, whatever. Don't really care too much about the time zone here. It's just not even your hour. Okay, so it's about 73, 74, 75 percent of the way through. Okay, so um, the you want to install Open Form? Pretty simple. Copy and paste all of this here. Okay, sudo app install Open Form default. Blah blah blah. The pre compiled version, we are not building any. Home. Okay, and let's just run a new just to wait. Point when it's thing. Yeah, just run the new fetch and you'll see, you'll see what I mean. The only docker only changes the OS, but the underlying hardware we, we do not simulate using. Will not simulate our resources, which are pretty precious on a very low spec computer. So this is a very useful um, good trick to help us get over some compatibility hurdles, or if you want to develop software, okay, uh, which is specific to any operating system, okay, you can use Docker. Okay, so you'll just wait a little bit more. Fast forwarding. Okay, so now we are back. Uh, let's run your fetch. See that uh, in this new fetch is now using the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS focal. And the kernel I'm using here is the Linux kernel 5.10 56 1. That's a Manjaro kernel. Oh, so you see this. Uh, this doesn't uh, emulate all of this underlying software. You can see the CPU is also the AMD CPU. The memory is also about the you If you check with the new fetch, pair it between the new general, you see the kernel is the same, CPU is the same, pretty much the same. So the only thing that's different here is the OS. So you should be able to install open form or whatever else you need here very easily. Now let's let's uh just see how do we exit. We exit. Just type exit. Use control D. And we can also use sudo docker run i2. But you don't need the bin bash anymore. Now we will just enter into the root system. If you type new fetch, you see a problem. It says new fetch not found. So there's there is a problem. All of your stuff actually sort of disappears. Okay, all of your stuff actually sort of uh, disappears. Let me bring you to the Stack Overflow page where you can solve it. Okay, so it says this is the Stack Overflow page which is useful. It says what I lose my data when the co uh, container exits. You can see we just installed NeoFetch. We exited the Docker environment. And when we came back in, uh, all of it was suddenly gone. Okay, so what's going on here? Okay. Well, um, if you go and read this page, which I'm not going to do it for you, I'm just going to demonstrate. If you read this page, you'll see that the data is not actually lost. I'm going to exit this one. Okay. And the way to check which uh to uh, because you can see we actually run two separate instances of Ubuntu 
The first time we installed NeoFetch, we installed Vim. Then after the second time we ran Ubuntu, it was totally gone. So what's going on here? We run a uh, Ubuntu Docker PSA. Okay. You'll see that uh, this uh, instance, okay, I like to call it instance, but uh, so called is the correct term is called container. Okay, this container. Uh, Ubuntu bin bash was run about 11 minutes ago and it exited two minutes ago. The latest one that we, we ran okay, was this Ubuntu. We did not specify the, the uh, shell or anything. Uh, we used Ubuntu and it exited about 22 seconds ago. The name here is called Musing Paini. This one is an upbeat Rohona. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm probably butchering the names. Okay, but it the one we want to access is this specific container ID. Okay, this specific container ID is the one where we installed uh, NeoFetch. We also installed Vim. Okay, how do we access this container ID? Okay, so this 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 thing is a little bit like Git, in the sense that you have to commit your. That's one way of making sure your data sticks. So sudo, uh, we will not use Git. We will use Docker commit so it's very similar docker commit then we will provide this container id okay docker commit container id then we save it under a name we can call it ubuntu call it any anything you like uh, just call it ubuntu and just press enter And so now what you're doing is you're committing this uh, instance, you're committing a container, the correct term is container, and you're putting it into an image. So if you want to check what images you have, okay, images are the, the so-called more permanent version, whereas the instance or container is more, I guess the temporary version. Okay, uh, I'm not using all the proper terms here, it's just to help you get an idea of what's going on. So you want to check what images you have, you can go sudo docker images. Okay. So if you want to run this latest image, okay, we call it Ubuntu latest. So we can do this. And you can do this. Uh sudo docker run. Okay, remember you have your int text, or if you are lazy, you can just put docker-it, it will be the same. So sudo docker run it ubuntu. And which one do you want? You want the latest one. Okay. So if you want the you, you want to run this one because it was created 30 seconds ago, it's the latest bit. So you just run Ubuntu latest. Okay. Again, uh we do our sudo docker run it. Okay, we want a, a specific image. I'll use this image here because that's the one we just committed. Okay. Remember we committed docker okay, using this instance or this container so container is like an instance so to speak okay connector con uh, container want to commit it to ubuntu so uh, this is the the image that we just committed we want to run this specific image so that so you have to specify what you want because over here i've been running docker before so there are multiple images of ubuntu so you see this uh, Ubuntu uh, 12 August 2021 tag, Ubuntu with a done tag, and Ubuntu with the latest. So just run image Ubuntu, just put the latest tag. And then of course you can specify again the shell that you want. And this is kind of optional. You always run bash by default, but you can just run. Okay, so if we press, if we click this, we will go back into our root environment. Okay, we'll go back to into our root environment. Uh, and we can just type new fetch again. This time, tada, new fetch is there. So that's how you. Last part I would like to talk about is to clean up all this stuff. Okay, I'll talk about clean up, but as uh, you can see. Uh, we are already nearing 20 plus minutes, which I want to make too long. I'll just stop here. See you in the next video where I'll talk a bit more about cleanup and management of 
both containers and images. Just want to do some housekeeping. You don't want to save too many things that uh, are kind of redundant. Okay, don't worry. All the all this stuff here, I'm going to post it inside the description. You can see it every single. I'll call it a day. 